Hey what is up guys, I'm your boy Nick with Pikmin. In this video we're going to be taking a look ahead at the UFC 296 card. This card is going to be premiering on on uh, December 16th, 2023. So this year, just a couple of weeks uh, left for this card. I'm so hyped for this card. I'm so hyped to, hyped to get uh, Kobe Covington back and uh, I can't wait for those press conferences. Those are going to be absolutely so entertaining to watch. Watch him fucking uh, just bully Ilya and Edwards all around the places. It's going to be fun watching him um, uh, talk shit all to everyone uh, at press conference and uh, other places. So I cannot wait for this card, man. This is going to be a crazy card. And uh, let's get into it, guys. So let's let's get into the first fight. First fight on the prelims, we have uh, Andre Feely, Andre Touchy Feely taking on uh, taking on uh, Lucas Almeida. Both these guys are strikers. They both like to uh, stand and bang and... Um, who do I think is the better striker? I think uh, Lucas Almeida is probably the better striker. Probably hits a little bit harder. Um, Andre Philly is a good striker. He was able to uh, hang on the feet with uh, Natalia Wood. He knocked Natalia Wood down first round. But we've seen Natalia Wood gets knocked down all over the places by everyone. We just seen Natalia Wood get knocked down by a nine mob. So I don't know how much credit you can really give to Andre Philly for doing that. But um, he's got good experience. He's been around the block, fought everyone. Fought against guys like Natalia Wood, fought against like Bill Algio, got a win over Bill Algio, co his decision. Uh, picked up and uh, got knocked up by Joe Anderson Brito, who's a fucking power bar. But uh, lost by uh, no contest with uh, Pineda and uh, got out grappled by Bryce Mitchell. But uh, it is what it is. Lucas Almeida, he's coming off the last two Pat Sabatini. Before that, he was uh, he's having success, uh, had success against Michael Trujano, where they went back and forth. That was an absolute war. And uh, Lucas Lucas Almeida got him, caught him in the third round, I think it was, and just knocked him down, knocked him out. Um, but uh, he's he's fought on the uh, contender series against Daniel Joe Huber. Joe yeah, Huber is a pretty good prospect in his own right, and uh, I think Lucas Almeida gets it done. Uh, I think Lucas Almeida gets it done by decision. Maybe a knockout. I could see. I could definitely see a knockout. But uh, Philly is pretty tough. But I'll go with Lucas Almeida by knockout for now. Let's go to the next fight, guys. Next up, we got uh, Samuel Gadjib taking on Martin Boudet. This is a striker versus grappler matchup, pretty much. Uh, Samuel Gadjib is a grappler, whereas Martin Boudet is a striker. Uh, Martin Boudet likes to throw hands, stand and bang, and he's a pretty durable guy. Samuel Gadjib, on the other hand, has heavy, heavy hands. It has the grappling in the back pocket. He uh, submitted the guy, uh, Greg Velasco, on uh, Dana White Contender Series. Got him down and just uh, got that uh, rear naked choke. But uh, before they knocked out Darko Stosic, who's a good uh, fighter. Darko Stosic has been around the block, fought at Jerry Prohajka too. He's been all over the place. He's undefeated, 11-0. And I do like him here. I think he can use a grappling. And even on the feet, he's not going to be a fish out of water on the feet. He's got heavy, heavy hands. And he can definitely land something big on uh, Martin Boudet. Martin Boudet isn't the most technical guy out there. I mean, he was getting outstruck by Berjerski. I bet on Brzezinski. I bet five units on Brzezinski live, and uh, I thought Brzezinski won the fight. Everyone thinks that Brzezinski won the fight. Even uh, MMA Guru, he's still complaining about that decision. That was one of the worst robberies out there. I had a five unit play on uh, Brzezinski live, and I'm pretty. I was too, I was pretty much counting my money. I was like, oh, he's gonna get it. He's gonna. He's won. I won the money. I was like super confident, and they still gave it to Boudet for some reason. I don't know why, but he got outstruck pretty badly. Um, in this fight, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna take the grappler, Samuel Gadjev. He's making his UFC debut. He's at plus money right now. Uh, Samuel Gadjev is. Uh, let's see what he's where he's sitting at. I got him at plus 140. He's sitting at plus 140 right now. Gadjev, where, where is he? Samuel Gadjev. Um, where is? Yeah, there he is. Plus 140 right now on uh, DraftKings. And uh, everywhere he's plus 140 right now. And I do think I do like him here. I think he gets the job done. They opened the line at. Uh, they opened a uh, Boudet at plus minus 142 and most people are betting Boudet and it makes sense why I mean he's the only one at the UFC level and so people are probably going to be betting him but I like uh, Gajiv here I think Gajiv gets it done by uh, by submission on the ground let's go to the next one now next up guys we are like um, next up we got uh, Josh Emmett taking on Giga Chikate and a uh, pretty good matchup here. Um, Giga Chikate is a kickboxer. Uh, Josh Emmett is also a striker who likes to throw heavy, heavy hands. And yeah, he's got some power. Josh Emmett's going to have more power in his hands. Giga Chikate is a prob mostly a volume striker. 
uh, throws a lot of kicks, and I think uh, that's gonna that's gonna help him in this fight. I think he's gonna be able to land those kicks on Josh Emmett. We saw against Yair Rodriguez, he didn't have an answer for those kicks of uh, Yair Rodriguez. Eventually, he took uh, Yair Rodriguez down. So in this fight, can he take uh, the guy Chikate down, and can he hold him down? I don't know if he can hold him down. But uh, Calvin Cater took uh, Giga Chikate down for 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 the fight, and uh, he was able, he was able to keep him down for the majority of the fight and won by decision. But uh, I don't know if Josh Hammett is able to keep him down for that long. So I'm gonna go Giga Chikate. I think Giga Chikate gets done, and I already got a bet on him. I got a I got a Giga Chikate two units on Giga Chikate at minus one sixty six, and I got half a unit on Samuel Rajiv at uh, plus one forty. And uh, let's go to the next. I think uh, Giga Chikate get done, gets it done by decision. I don't think he's gonna knock him out. I mean, if Taporia and uh, Taporia and Yair Rodriguez isn't knocking him out, I don't think Giga Chikate does that. So I'll take Giga Chikate by decision for now. That's my pick. Let's go to the next fight, guys. Next up, we got uh, Cody Garbrandt, Cody Nochen Garbrandt taking on uh, Brian Kelleher. And uh, I like this matchup for Brian Kelleher. Um, Cody Nochen Garbrandt. Uh, he almost got chinned by Trevin Jones too, but Trevin Jones has no fight IQ before they got chinned by down a weight class at 125 by Kai Carter Fronts. Got outworked by Rob Font, beat uh, Sun Tzu, and uh, got knocked out by Pedro Munoz. I don't think Cody Garbrandt still has any chin left. I'm going to go Brian Kelleher. You know, this is going to be a good fight. This is good, probably going to be a fight of the night, and I like this fight a lot. I don't think Cody Garbrandt going to be stable. I don't think he's going to be able to stay on the outside for the whole fight. I think eventually Kelleher is going to land a bomb and I think he's going to hurt him badly. I'm going to say Brian Kelleher gets it done by a knockout. Let's go to the next fight guy. Next up we got Alonzo Manyfield taking on Dustin Jacoby and uh, we got Antomic versus the Heniak. And uh, Alonzo Manyfield is a, is, a, is a striker who throws heavy, heavy shots, heavy bombs and he's going to be looking to knock your head out cold. That's what he does. Um, and uh, Dustin Jacoby is a a striker, glory kickboxer. He's fought against guys like Alex Poatan, Pereira, Pereira knocked him out, but uh, still good experience for the guy. And I think uh, this is a good matchup for him. Um, Dustin Jacoby coming off that knockout win over uh, Kennedy Chukwu, where I did pick Kennedy Chukwu there. I didn't think he's gonna knock him out, but he did. And uh, he looks to be making, still be making a lot of improvements, man. And uh, Dustin Jacoby, yeah, even this fight against the uh, clear round three, I thought he got robbed in the fight. But in this one, he got knocked down a couple of times, but then uh, won the third round. So he's shown good toughness, showed good toughness in this fight. He was able to stay in the fight, even though he got knocked down a couple of times. In this fight, I like Dustin Jacoby. I think Dustin Jacoby gets it done by decision. I think he outlands Lanza Manifield on the feet. And I think he gets it done by decision. Let's go to the next fight. Next up, we got uh, on the prelims, we got Randy Brown taking on Muslim Salikov. And I'm pretty confident that Randy Brown gets this done. Um, Muslim Salikov has one round cardio. After the first round, he's pretty much toast. Uh, he's got nothing left in the tank after the first round. Um, and I think uh, that's what happens here, man. I think um, Randy Brown uh, is a good striker. He's got good kick, kick, kickboxing skills from the outside. And I think on the first round, it's going to be a back and forth fight. If he doesn't get knocked out in the first round by Muslim Salikov, who isn't knocking out anyone other than uh, Andre Fialiu. <laughs> Andre Fialiu is out of the UFC now. But um, I like Randy Brown here. I think he's gonna outwork him for three rounds. Um, I like Randy Brown. I think Rudeborg gets it done by decision, and I got a bet on him too. I got uh two units at minus one ninety eight on Randy Brown, and I think he gets it done. Um, let's go to the next one, guys. Next up, we got um decision. I think uh Randy Brown by decision. Next fight, guys. We got a who gives a fuck fight here. We got Casey O'Neill taking on uh, Larry Lipsky. And Casey O'Neill is a pretty big favorite over uh, Larry Lipsky, and I don't understand why. Uh, Casey O'Neill coming off that loss to um, Jennifer Maya, where she just got outworked for three rounds. And before she had a split decision with the Rocks and Madafuri. She's been having these close decision wins over these girls. I'm going to take Arian Lipsky here. Uh, who gives a fuck about this fight? I'm not going to be betting on this fight. And I advise you guys shouldn't bet on this fight either. But uh, I think uh, Arian Lipsky, she's still making some improvements, but she's kind of chinny. She got chinned by Cochera, got chinned by Montana De La Rosa with ground and pound. But uh, she still seems to be making improvements. She got that win over JJ, got that win over Melissa Gatto as an underdog too. I picked her there as an underdog. I think I picked her there as an underdog, right? I did. Yeah, I picked uh, Ariane Lipsky uh, as an underdog against Melissa Gatto. 
and Steve Zell were two to one uh, underdog there. Um, so I think uh, Lipsky can get this done. I like I like Lipsky here to get it done. Arian Lipsky by decision, I think. Let's go to the next fight, guys. Next up, we got Arena of Ghana taking on Carol Hosa. Carol Hosa made some made us some money against Yana Santos, but that was a close fight. Way too close for my comfort. But uh, this I like this fight for her. I think this is a good fight for um, Carol Hosa. Uh, we got Arena Aldana who's going to be looking to strike with her. But Arena Aldana is going to be much bigger, 5'9", with a 68.5 inch reach. And she's training with the with the champion right now. She lost to Amanda Nunes, no shame losing to Amanda Nunes. Um, but this is good, probably going to be a stand-up fight for three rounds. And I like Arena Aldana's volume. I think she's got better volume than Carol Hosa. Carol Hosa takes too long to get going. And I think Arena Aldana can now work her for three rounds. So Arena Aldana by decision. But if Carol Hosa wants to win, she's got to wrestle for three rounds. Let's go to the next fight. We got uh, Tagir Ulan Bekov taking on Cody Durden. For the next fight, we got um, Tagir Ulan Bekov is a good good fighter all around. He's got some nasty submissions. Submitted uh, Nate Manis with the standing guillotine choke a year ago. In this fight, he dropped the ball to Tim Elliott, but Tim Elliott was cheating. Tim Elliott was grabbing his gloves, grabbing everything that he could. He did everything to cheat to get that win, and Tim Elliott got it done. Before that, he uh, got that win over uh, Nasty Mento with the closest decision. But I'll, I'll be honest, I like Cody Durden here. I picked Cody Durden every t every fight. I picked him against uh, Charles Johnson as an underdog. He was a plus 115 underdog against Charles Johnson. Then he was underdog against um, Jake Hadley too. He was a plus 165 underdog against Jake Hadley and he got it done there too. So I think I uh, like Cody Durden here. Maybe I could be biased. But I think he gets the job done. Um, I don't. I don't really rate Tagir Ulan back of all that much. He's okay. He's he's, right. he's got some nasty chokes. But if if uh, Cody Durden can stay safe in the from the guillotine choke, I think he can out wrestle Tagir Ulan back of. I mean, if Tim Elliott can do it, I think uh, Cody Durden can do it. Cody Durden looks to be making a lot of improvements right now, and I think he can get it done. Um, so Cody Durden by decision is my pick for this fight. Let's go to the next one, guys. Next up, we got uh Sente Luca taking on Ian Machado Gary. And uh, Machado Gary looking to make it uh, 14 in a row. And he's looks to be making a lot of improvements from fight to fight. But now he's going to be taking on the silent assassin, Luque, who's uh, had so many finishes at the UFC level. He's finished um, um, 13 of his wins in the UFC level, which is absolutely crazy. He only gone to only won by decision once. And he's gone to, uh, he's only got knocked out once. He's only been knocked out once by... Um, where was it? that was a long time ago by um did, when did he get knocked out he got knocked out by i can't even see when he got knocked out but yeah you can't see when he got knocked out but he's fought everyone he's fought against Leon edwards fought Bilal muhammad knocked out Bilal muhammad and he's fought everyone man he's been around the block for too long he's he got knocked out by jeff neal but yeah, i think i picked um i picked a uh, jeff neal in that one and he got knocked on bad. That was the first time he was knocked out. But uh, I don't think uh, Ian Gary is going to knock him out. But I think Ian Gary is going to outwork him for three rounds. I think he's going to use those kicks and keep him at bay. And I got a bet on uh, Gary too. I got uh, Ian Gary. I got how much money on him? Where is he? I got uh, 1.2.25 units at uh, minus 225. I think he gets it done. Uh, I think he beats uh, Luke. But Luke is dangerous. Don't count out Luke. Luke is a good underdog play probably. But I think it's Ian Gary's time now. Ian Gary by decision. I don't see him finishing Luke. Let's go to the next fight guys. Next up on the main card we have Tony. Alka Koi Ferguson taking on Paddy Pimble. And uh, this is a good matchup. But uh, it's sad seeing Tony Ferguson still fighting. Obviously he retires. I mean it would be good to fucking see him retire at some point. But it is what it is. I mean what can you do? He's going to make some money. He's going to make that bread for his family. And uh, it is what it is. So, um, who do I think is going to win this fight? I think Paddy Pimble is going to fucking get it done. I think uh, Tony Ferguson should not even be fighting anymore, if I'm being honest. But I know he's going to make that money. He's going to make that bread for his family. So, it is what it is. But uh, I think Paddy Pimble gets it done by submission. Um, the way Tony Ferguson was walking into the submission against uh, Nate, Ma Nate Diaz, he walked into that guilty choke and just put his head in there. I mean, that was pretty weird. Then he got submitted by Bobby Green. I mean, Bobby Green isn't submitting anyone. I think it's Alcacoy's time is over, man. I think Paddy Pimble is going to win. And this is a pretty horrible matchmaking by the UFC. 
Um, good step up in competition, but for Paddy Pimble, he's a young guy. I think he's going to get a submission win. Um, I'm not going to be betting on this. It sucks seeing Tony Ferguson lose over and over. But uh, let's go to the next fight, guys. Next up, we got... Um, next up, we have... Uh, Sab Rackman out taking on Stephen Thompson. And a uh, good fight here. I like this matchup for Savka Rachmanov. Not a good matchup for Steven Thompson. I think Savka Rachmanov is going to find a uh, grounded pound TKO. Steven Thompson, he hasn't been submitted. He's never been submitted. Maybe this could be the first time. But he's usually defense submissions a lot. He's only been knocked out once. And he's had so many fights in the UFC level. He's had, uh, what, uh, 19 fights in the UFC level. Only been knocked out once. Yeah, I think that knocked out. He got knocked out by Sergio uh, Pettis, I think, right? He got knocked out by Anthony Pettis, yeah, by Superman Punch. But uh, I like Rachmanov here. I think Slavka Rachmanov gets it done by Grand and Pound TKO. I don't know if I don't think I have a bet on Slavka Rachmanov. That line is too crazy. Yeah, I don't have a bet on him. He's, that line is too fucking crazy for me to bet on him. But I think he gets it done. Um, I'll probably put a bet on Jacoby. I think Jacoby's going to get it done. Minus 180 for Justin Jacoby. They opened those lines at even money. Wow. I should have gotten in early, but uh, it is what it is. What can you do? I got in. Uh, they even opened Randy Brown at uh, dog money. Wow. Yeah, I got to the lines way too late. It is what it is, but um, I think uh, fucking Sav Karakunov gets it done by inside the distance is a good play. I think Sav Karakunov gets it done by knockout. Is my call. Knockout TKO is my call for Sav Karakunov. Let's go to the next fight, guys. We have the co main event of the uni, guys. Hit the like down below. And uh, like the video down below if you guys enjoyed the breakdowns and uh, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new here. And uh, we're at the co-main event of the new. This is the second time they're going to be rematch. This is, a, this is a rematch between these two guys. Pantoza submitted Roy Wall the first time. Uh, how many years ago was that? That was like uh, two two month, two years and two months ago. I think it's going to go the same way. I think uh, uh, Pantoza is going to wrestle him. I don't think Roy Wall take that defense is all that good. But he's a dangerous guy uh, off his back. He's got nasty submissions. Maybe he can catch Pantoza in something. But I just don't see him, man. I just don't see him catching. If uh, Moreno isn't submitting Pantoza, I don't think Roy Wall is going to do anything like that. Roy Wall did uh, land that crazy knee on uh, Nicolau. So maybe he can land a knee or a head kick or something. He's going to be 4 inch taller. He's going to have a reach advantage too. Training at a factory X Moita. So he's training at a good team. But uh, I just don't think it's going to happen, man. I just don't see it happening. I think fucking... What's his name? I think fucking uh, Pantoza is going to get this done. I'm pretty confident that Pantoza is going to get done. And I think there's going to be a submission again on the ground. He's, he's too slick on the ground. Pantoza is too fucking slick on the ground. And I think Pantoza gets it done by... Um, I'll say Pantoza gets it done by submission on the ground again. But it could definitely go into decision. Uh, but it's five rounds. I don't know if I see it going to decision. But uh, my pick is uh, Pantoza by submission again. Let's go to the main event of the evening now, guys. We have uh, Ili and Edwards taking on Kobe KS Covington for the 170 strap. We got Ali uh, and Edwards, the striker, taking on uh, Kobe KS Covington, who's a grappler. Uh, Kobe Covington is an American wrestler, and the lines are pretty close in this fight. Uh, they got a, uh, they got a. Uh, where is it? Um, can I fucking find the lines here? God damn it! Where's the line here? They got, uh, damn, I can't find the damn fucking line anywhere. Leon Edwards is minus 125 and the comeback on Kobe coming to the plus 105. And I like Leon Edwards a lot here. I think Leon Edwards is going to beat him up. I'm pretty confident that Leon Edwards is going to win. And I think uh, he's going to defend the takedowns and I think Kobe Covington is not going to be too comfortable on the feet. Kobe Covington has got okay striking, not the best striking, but uh, I don't think it's going to work, guys. I think fucking uh, Leon Edwards is going to get it done. Um, I think he's going to defend the takedowns. And uh, he's going to gain confidence when he starts defending the takedown. I think he's going to start letting those kicks go. Start landing those leg kicks. He's got nasty leg kicks that he likes to throw. And he's got nasty ground and pound too. But uh, he's got nasty submissions too. Leon Edwards, he's not a fish out of water on the ground. And I think that's what people forget. I think people forget that Leon Edwards can uh, grapple too. But I think if, uh, can, uh, Leon Edwards gets it done. I got over three units on him he's my biggest play on this card so far i got 3.32 3, 3.25 units on him at minus 125 and i'm pretty confident that he's gonna get it done so guys uh let's go over all the pick all the bets again let's go over all the picks again my picks for uh the whole card i got uh, leon edwards by decision and the co-main event i have uh, pantoza by submission and the next five we're gonna go with sapka rachmanov by submission 
by knockout ground and pound. I mean, next fight we're gonna go Paddy Pimblet by submission. Next fight we're gonna go Gary by decision. In the next fight we're gonna go Cody Durden by decision. In the next fight we're gonna go Irina Aldana by decision. In the next fight we're gonna go um, Irina Lipsky by decision. In the next fight we're gonna go Randy Brown by decision. Next one we're gonna go Dustin Jacoby by decision. In the next one we're gonna go Brian Kelleher by Tanakar. Next one we're gonna go Giga Chikate by decision. In the next one we're gonna go Sunil Gajib by by submission. In the next one we're gonna Lucas Almeida by some by Nakar. Let's go over all the all the bets that I have so far. So the the biggest bet on this card I have is so far right now is uh Leon Edwards at minus one twenty five. I got three point two five units on him. And then I got uh um two units on Giga Chikate at minus one sixty six. And then I got Ian, Ian Gary, 2.25 units on Ian Gary, uh, at minus 225. And then I got uh, two units on Randy Brown um, at a minus 198, which isn't a bad line at all. And I'm pretty confident that Randy Brown is going to get it done. He's one of my most confident picks on this card. Then I like, uh, as, as an underdog, plus money, I like Samuel Gajiv, who's got the grappling advantage over uh, over Boudet. If he gets that fight to the ground, I think Samuel Gajiv is going to get it done. So I got half a unit on him. I might put more money on him if he gets a uh, bigger. If he gets into the bigger plus money, I might put more money on him. And then I got Cody Durden, 1.2 units on him. Cody Durden at plus 120. I like that a lot. So good luck this weekend, guys. I'll see you guys in the next one. And uh, let me know if you guys liked, enjoyed the breakdowns. Uh, like the video down below. And I'll see you guys in the next one, man. Take care of yourself, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.